Our next guest is Corporal Matthew Bradford. On September 11, 2001, as just a freshman in high school, he watched the terrorist attacks on America's soil and knew at that moment he wanted to join the military after graduating. He enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and was deployed to Iraq in September 2006. On January 18, 2007, he was severely injured after stepping on an IED. His left leg was immediately removed from the blast. His right leg was severely damaged. Shrapnel took his eyesight, and he suffered multiple injuries to his arms, loss of movement in his right hand, and damage internally. He would spend the next three weeks in a coma and undergo multiple surgeries at Bethesda Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, to include amputation of his right leg. After an extensive recovery on April 7, 2010, Corporal Bradford re-enlisted in the Marine Corps, becoming the first blind double amputee in the history of the Marine Corps to do so. He was assigned to Wounded Warrior Battalion East, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, from July 2010 to July 2012, and retired as a corporal on August 1st, 2012. Matthew has never left his injuries define who he is or what he can do, and lives his life pushing through limitations. He lives by the words, no legs, no vision, no problem. He lives a life of inspiration and motivation, and his resilient attitude impacts everyone he interacts with. Currently, Matthew works for Kentucky State Congressman Andy Barr as the National Security Fellow for Kentucky's 6th District doing veterans outreach and assistance. <clears throat> he believes in serving others as a way of giving back to those that served him while in recovery and as a way to not forget our veterans who have sacrificed so much for our country. Please join me in welcoming VFW life member, retired Marine Corporal Matthew Bradford. Good morning. Uh, before I get started, where's my Kentucky veterans at? I know they're in here somewhere. There we go. <laughs> That's a, it's a true honor to be here. Thank you, VFW, for, for uh, having me join you all today. It's an honor to be in the same room with all of you all. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank each and every one of you all for your service to this country because without your service, we'd be living in a different world today. So thank you so much. On January 18, 2007, my life changed in a matter of seconds. One bomb exploded underneath me and sent my life from light to dark in a matter of seconds. Throughout these last 12 years, many people have asked me what was going through my mind, what was I thinking? And honestly, while I was laying in my own blood on that Iraqi street, I could never find the answer to those questions. But let me take a minute to go through my story and who I am today and what I've overcome and that will answer the question that I couldn't have on that day in January of 2007. 
Watching the terrorist attacks in 2001 as a freshman in high school, I knew that it was my purpose to serve this country, even though I was only a freshman. So I set my mind up, and three years later, I signed up through the delayed entry program because I wanted to fight this for this country, and I wanted to fight the enemy to make sure that another 9-11 does not happen ever again. So September of 2005, oh, thank you. So as I turned 18, August of my senior year in high school, I went to the MEP station, I signed my name, and I received the date of when I would go to recruit training. And pretty much less than a year, a little over a year later, in September of 2005, I was standing on the yellow footprints in Paris Island. Not really knowing what's going on, because it's a lot different getting yelled at face to face than it was on a TV then. But uh, three months later, receiving my Eagle Globe anchor, I finally realized for somebody who who had many struggles with life growing up, back and forth from a divorced family. I, found like, I finally found something in my life that I was good at and I enjoyed doing, and that was serving this country and serving something way greater than myself. As I mentioned earlier, the reason why I joined the Marine Corps is because I wanted to deploy. And exactly a year later, on September 11th, 2006, I was in Kuwait on my way to Iraq. We walked into a situation in a country that was firefight after firefight, many service members being wounded and unfortunately being killed. We actually had to fight our way onto our own FOB. And for the first couple of months, Marine after Marine was either being wounded or killed. Our whole battalion lost 23 Marines during that deployment, and over 100 were wounded either severely or not severely. But as we walked away from that country, we were all wounded because we were all fighting the enemy in our head, no matter if we were, no matter if we were uh, wounded on battlefield. But through my Marine Corps career and everything afterwards, it has helped guide me through this life and direct me through this life. And everything that I learned in the Marine Corps, it motivates and inspires me each and every day to go out and do these unbelievable things, even though the obstacles and the challenges I have facing me each and every day. So some of the things that I've come up with these last few years is things that I'm sure many of you all have heard. It's the simple phrase of adapt and overcome, lead by example, attitude is everything, and to never quit. On January 18, 2007, as I mentioned earlier, a day that changed my life, I had to learn to adapt and overcome. And it was tough because here I am as a 20-year-old, wasn't really focused too much on school, the only thing, I wanted to, only thing I wanted to do was to serve this country, to deploy as many times as I possibly can, and it was taken from me. One wrong step, as walking patrol past the compound wall, I looked down to my right, and inside a ditch laid command wires entering a pipe underneath the road. And as I was standing directly over that pipe, it exploded right underneath me, sending shrapnel into both my eyes, blinded me. As I laid there, hearing the Marines around me doing everything they can to get me out of that area, out of that danger zone, putting tourniquets on my legs, you know, and for the next three weeks, I, I stayed in a coma. I didn't know if I was alive, if I was dead, didn't know what was going on. And as I woke up from that coma three weeks later, I realized everything that happened to me on that day was the worst thing that could ever happen to me at all. You only see these kind of injuries on TV, you never expect it to happen to yourself. And for the few years that I was in the Marine Corps, I felt like I finally figured out my own life. And I decided to join the Marines and here I am doing it the right way. And in a matter of seconds, my whole life was flipped upside down and taken from me. And as my dad told me in the hospital room about my injuries, about losing my legs and my vision, I was crushed. I was devastated. I hated life. Then that was when I realized that I didn't want to live anymore. So I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't talk to anybody. And I just wanted to lay there and just die in that hospital bed. I didn't care too much about my vision. It was my legs. I wanted my legs to grow back. But for some strange reason, the light flipped on one day. There was a Marine in the detachment that would come and talk to me each and every day. He would not talk about my injuries. He would not talk about my service. He, would be my, he was my friend. We would talk about other things. 
And that helped me realize that there's life outside those hospital doors. With no legs and no vision, there's many things in this world that I could still do. But the first thing I had to do is to learn to get out of this hospital bed. I was so skinny and weak, it was hard for me to even lift my head up off that bed. But once I got my mind straight and I started creating these goals within my head, I realized that going from the hospital bed to the wheelchair, the wheelchair outside those hospital doors would be easy. Because at the end of the day, and all the nurses, the corpsmen, the doctors, the Marines, my family, my friends, they still talked to me and still treated me as a Marine. And going through these difficult moments in my life, I realized that all my brothers in Iraq, who I truly miss and who I truly wanted to be with, would not want me to give up on life and quit. They would want me to fight it out and they would want me to overcome this new challenge in my life. So with the Marine, and his guidance, I realized then this is what I want to do. I want to stay in the Marine Corps and I want to help out other severely wounded service members because at that time in 2007, I was probably one of the worst injuries coming home from Iraq or Afghanistan. So I started creating these goals, a broad goal of re-enlisting in the Marine Corps. I knew the challenges would be tough, but you know what, hey, we all face challenges each and every day, so it's just another thing in my way. And I started creating these goals, but before I knew about the, the broad goal, I'd have to create these minor goals. As I mentioned about going from the hospital bed to the chair outside the door, I would have to learn how to walk again. I wanted to figure out how to walk on two prosthetic legs before I figured out how to walk on prosthetic legs with vision loss. And five months after my injury, I stood up on my prosthetic legs for the first time. And a year later, I went to the blind school and I learned everything I could from independent mobility to braille, to learning how to navigate around a computer, email, and I even build a birdhouse. And I don't know about you, but a table saw scared me when I had vision. So with no vision, <laughs> but thankfully I didn't lose no fingers or anything, so. But all along this way, I had to learn that I couldn't do it the normal way. I had to adapt to these injuries, these circumstances, and I gotta find ways to overcome it. And for the next three years, I stayed focused on re-enlisting in the Marine Corps because that's one thing I want to do. People would talk to me each and every day. It's like, Matt, you will make so much more money if you get out of the Marine Corps and retire and get your disability paycheck. And I'd look at them straight face to face and tell them I didn't join the Marine Corps for money. I'm here to serve my brothers and my sisters who are tragic, severely wounded, who need my help and assistance right now. <laughs> So with all of that, on April 7, 2010, I raised my right hand and I re-enlisted in the Marine Corps, becoming the first blind uplane team in the history of the Marine Corps to do that. And I was on my way to North Carolina to the Wounded Warrior Battalion in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And for the next two years, I would work with the severely wounded, with the wounded. And not even that, I would work with the, the, the Marines who weren't wounded. And I would inspire and motivate them to go out and do things that they never thought they would do. In 2011, I had the opportunity to go back to Iraq on a closure trip. This trip took me to a place where I was severely injured, a country that took so much from me. But it also gave me the opportunity to leave that country on my own two feet. As standing there underneath a flagpole, raising an American flag that's been with me everywhere from Hawaii to Iraq to each hospital I visited, each hospital I was in. Sitting there thinking, I joined the Marine Corps to fight and to deploy. And I can't do that no more. But I can share my story, and I don't have to be in uniform. You know, and thankfully, with the opportunity to re-enlist and serve out two more years in the Marine Corps, it gave me that opportunity and that closure to say that it's, it's over. You know, to walk away from the Marine Corps, but I could still hold my head up high because for the rest of my life, I will always hold that title as United States Marine. So, oh, oh. And through everything else the last seven years, I have learned to look life in a different light. I've learned to accept the things, accept the hard work, be dedicated and determined to whatever task I put in front of me and go after it. I left North Carolina to move back to Kentucky because my dream school was University of Kentucky. I graduated from there in May 2017 with multiple degrees. 
And believe me, it was tough to go back to school and be around a bunch of 18, 19 year olds that probably never left their county or they spend so much time on Facebook and Instagram. But I realized working with the professors and learning to do things my way, it helped me overcome. And as a struggling student in high school who didn't really care too much for high school, I graduated with a 3.1 GPA. And I'm very proud of that, that's for sure. That's a... But in life, we always face these challenges, these difficult moments. You know, to me, I always compare life to a Spartan race. You walk perfectly for a few feet, and then you got a six-foot wall that you got to overcome. And sometimes the easiest way is to climb the wall to get over it, not turn around or find the easy way around. And you know what? These challenges have motivated me each and every morning when I wake up, because I know each day is a challenge, but at the end of the day, when I put my head on that pillow, I know I lived a, a successful day, and I accomplished every task that I put in front of me. So the next thing that I was talking about was lead by example. And through these last 12 years, I have surrounded myself by some amazing people. Speaking of the Marine earlier, who, who spoke with me day in and day out, not about my injuries, but about my life. You know, my family, my friends. And in 2007, when I was learning how to walk and learning how to be comfortable with myself and these prosthetics, it was my physical therapist who saw the frustration in my eyes one day when I was learning how to walk. I was going from the left wall to the right wall, not wanting to fall, and with double amputations, I kept trying to scissor kick, basically tripping myself. And he stopped me because he saw this frustration. He said, Matt, whatever you do, I will never let you fall. Just walk. And later on in life, I, I realized that the whole just walk method is how we live each and every day. I never know what my next step's going to be, but I'm going to take it. And it's going to be, it's going to be forward. I might walk around on two prosthetic legs, and I might look at a dark screen each and every day, but my feet are facing forward and my vision on life is 2020. And with that mindset, <laughs> and I realize each and every day is that way. We never know what tomorrow or next week's gonna hold, but we gotta get through today. And that's the way I look at my life, is we're more worried about today, and then when tomorrow is here, I'll worry about it. And so I just walk through life. I walk through each obstacle in front of me. And these are things that I've, that's motivated me along this way. And another person that has really inspired me along this way was, a, was my senior drill instructor, which is in the Marine Corps is a small world. I'm sure Marines in here know. And, but the day of my injury, when they put me in the back of a Humvee, the last words I heard was, you'll be fine, Bradford. And then I passed out. Not knowing, not knowing where I was going, not knowing if I was alive, if this is it, if my life ended at 20. But I know each and every day, when I'm facing these struggles, these challenges, I know at the end of the day, everything's going to be fine. So I use that, and that plays in my head each and every time, each and every event that I do, is that at the end of the day, it's going to be fine. And lastly, I was directed and guided by the one true leader, the great Lord above. I was not the most religious 20-year-old or a kid growing up. I went to church with my granny, and she had to basically feed me candy to keep me quiet and awake in the back of a church. I was a 19-year-old living in Hawaii, loving life and living it to its fullest. But I stepped on an IED, and Somebody was looking out for me. The Lord above was looking out for me. He already had my next mission mapped out. It was my next job, my next patrol to pursue this mission, to encourage others, to inspire others, and motivate them to go out and live their life beyond their own bare minimum. I challenge myself each and every day because I get bored with doing the same thing over and over again. But I know if I can inspire and motivate one person a day, then I, that's a job well done. The Lord directed me down this mission, and I'm going to do everything I can to fill this mission and to continue inspiring, motivating others to get off their couch, to go out and walk a 5K, do a Spartan race, do whatever. You know, and, and through it all, through every challenge and difficult moment I've had, I've kept a positive attitude, and I realized when you walk into situations with a positive outlook on that situation, you're at a higher risk of succeeding. 
If you walk into any situation realizing you're going to fail or you're negative about it, then you are going to fail. So I maintain a positive attitude on everything in life because you know what? That's how we have to live our life. You know, if you live your life with the down in the dumps and you're just hating everything that you do, then you're never going to accomplish anything in this life. And through it all, as I mentioned earlier, I live my life for those 23 Marines that were killed in Iraq on my deployment. I live my life for my wife and my three kids. And I know it, that they would want me to live my life to the fullest. So I honor them each and every day through every event, every race, every obstacle that I climb. It's for those Marines. The Marine Corps, always faithful, faithful to my brothers, to the Corps, to the country, to my family. You know, my wife is truly amazing, and our three kids are amazing. And every day that I wake up, you know, we always have these dark moments in our life. You know, I pray every night that I'm going to wake up one day and see my wife and see our kids. And I wake up and I open my eyes to see darkness. I go through my morning routine, I put my prosthetic legs on, and the minute that I feel like that I'm like, I don't feel like going out in the world today, I just start questioning life. My seven-year-old daughter walks into the room and says, I love you, Dad. And for the rest of my life, I will never let her, her brother and her sister or mother live a day without me in their life. They're my daily motivation and another reason why I do what I do to inspire veterans, to inspire civilians, to motivate them. Because if I could teach them anything in life, it's to go out and live their life. So, you know, uh, so in 2009, as I close, I walked a baton death march. It was the first event that I did after my injuries, a little over two years since I lost both my legs. And I walked 10 miles in eight hours, but I didn't walk all 14. It was the first event that I ever quit on. Despite my injuries, despite my restrictions, limitations, whatever, I don't use those excuses. I quit. The guy walked over to me that worked the event and was like, 10 miles, that's it? It's like, you tried doing this with no legs and no vision, you know? <laughs> but you know what? For the next 10 years, everything that I've done in life, I've used that quitting, those 10 miles, as motivation. It's guided me through seven Marine Corps marathons, seven half marathons, Spartan races, to just last week when I attempted to climb Mount Rainier for the second time. Also did a 200-mile bike ride from Seattle to Portland. It's those things, it's that motivation that has guided me these last 10 years. And this past March, I walked out there and I attacked that Baton Death March again, and, and I completed 14 miles. The last mile was the most difficult mile. My legs were sore, I was tired, and with each step I wanted to stop moving. I wanted to quit. But then I realized, as my feet kept moving, I realized while I was laying on that Iraqi street 12 years ago, that this is my new mission in life. That I want to use, give everything I got to inspire and to serve this country. When I raised my right hand, and I went and stood on those yellow footprints. My service did not end when I said that it was done with the Marine Corps. I'm continuing serving the veterans today because for us as veterans, we need to continue serving each other because we're the only ones that understand each other. We need to be our brother's keeper and we need to watch out for our six. And that's what I realized on that last mile that no matter the obstacles, no matter the pain, I want to continue to keep pushing myself because I know that somebody is paying attention and somebody is watching and somebody is following. When I was in therapy, going, learning how to walk, my physical therapist walked over to me and said, Matt, you might not see this, but each and every day when you walk into therapy and you sit on this mat, people watch you. They watch you walk in here and put your legs on, stand up and walk out. And that's what it's all about. It's about being your brother's keeper and being there for your veterans. So for the rest of my life, this is my mission in life. It's to serve veterans because I stand here in front of you all and I'm sure there's a few that's, you know, inspired by my story, but I'm truly inspired by your story. We're all a family. Once a bullet flies over our head or a bomb explodes underneath us, we're bonded together. I really appreciate the opportunity to stand in front of you today to be amongst family. This is the this is the only family reunion that I enjoy going to. I don't even go to my own family reunion. But uh, 
Thank you. But, so, yeah. but thank you so much for your service to this country. And for me, probably one of the youngest veterans in here, when I served, you know, we were maintaining your legacy and what you defended. To all of you all, thank you so much for everything. God bless and Semper Fidelis. John's on your left and I'm on your right, brother. All right. I was at both those batons with you. Oh, really? Yes, sir. <laughs> I, live, I live two hours from there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good job. Man. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Really inspired me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your utmost respect, here. brother. Thank you so much. Am I going with you? Yeah.